Welcome to Fastlane's Collaboration Made Easy video program. Interested in CCNP Collaboration Certification? We'll help you understand what you need to do to get certified. This video is part of the Fastlane Understanding Cisco Collaboration Certification Series. Understanding Cisco Collaboration Certification, this video, is the first in the series. The remaining videos will be online soon on the corresponding Fastlane course web pages. The Cisco CCNA Collaboration Certification is first for Cisco Collaboration Administrators or Engineers. We'll talk about CCNA certification in detail in the next video in the series. How can I get my CCNP Collaboration Certification? You need to pass these four exams to get CCNP Collaboration Certified. CIPTV1 300-070. This is the first exam and focuses primarily on single-site CUCM deployments. CIPTV2 300-075. This exam focuses on CUCM multi-site deployments and includes discussion of VCS and Expressway. CAPS 300-085. CAPS focuses on Cisco Unity Connection, Cisco Unity Express, and Cisco IM in Presence. And CT Collab 300-080. This is the troubleshooting exam. You should take this one last. Take the exams in this order, or switch CIPTV2 and CAPS for second and third. If you have your CCNP voice certification, you only need to pass the CIPTV2 300-075 exam. CCNP voice certification is no longer valid, and the exams were retired in October of 2015. What if you've taken some CCNP voice exams but didn't get your CCNP voice certification? These CCNP voice exams count towards your CCNP collaboration certification. CIPT1 642-447 counts for CIPTV1 300-070. CIPT2 642-457 counts for CIPTV2 300-075. CAPS 642-467 counts for CAPS 300-085 and T-Voice 642-427 counts for CT Collab 300-080. The C-Voice 642-437 exam does not count towards your CCNP collaboration certification. C-Voice focused on router configuration and VoIP protocols H323 MGCP, and SIP. Much of this material has been dropped from CCNP collaboration training. What do I need to pass the exams? Many find these exams difficult. The CIPTV2 exam is particularly hard. To pass the exam, you need to understand the exam blueprint provided by learning at Cisco, find study material, once you've found the study material, you need a study method. We'll talk about this. And you need to spend the time required to learn the material. This can be more or less time depending upon your background and experience. What do we mean by find study material? Isn't the exam based on the corresponding course and labs and the foundation learning guide? It's a common misperception that the exams are based on the corresponding course and labs and the foundation learning guides. Start with the Learning at Cisco web pages to understand the blueprint and find study materials. The Cisco Learning Network has pages describing the exams. Four tabs are provided for each exam. An overview, exam topics, this is the blueprint, study material. These pages provide few useful recommendations on what to study. The student guides for the courses listed on the overview pages are the best place to start. Learning at Cisco provides nine or 10 practice questions for each exam. You need to review this information very carefully. 
The Overview tab for each exam provides the length of the exam, the time you have to complete it, and the number of questions on it. The score you need is not provided anywhere, but generally you need about 850 out of 1,000 possible points. Each exam has a corresponding course that's recommended for training. These courses are all five-day instructor-led, available in class or online. There's Cisco Technology Training for Collaboration eLearning. Cisco's eLearning products are a great option, and we'll talk about them shortly. The Cisco Press link does not identify any specific Cisco Press books. However, each course has a corresponding foundation learning guide, and these books are easy to find. Finding the right material to study is your first priority. Under exam topics, you can find the blueprint. Questions on the exam can be drawn from any of these topics from any source. Here are the exam topics for the CAPS exam. Each topic is weighted based on the percentage of questions included on the exam for that topic. If you click Show Details, you can see more information on each topic. Fastlane is providing videos discussing the exam topics and study material in detail for each exam. You can find these on the Fastlane web pages for the individual courses. Remember, exam questions are not restricted to content in either the course, labs, or the Foundation Learning Guide. You need to study the blueprint carefully to understand what's on the exam. How do I know what to study? There are many topics on the exam. The Blueprint provides this information. Cisco has a variety of learning products, five-day instructor-led classes, e-learning with labs products, and there are the foundation learning guides. What's the difference between these learning products and how useful are they? We'll talk about this soon. There are different versions of the products. The course is focused on the 10.5 versions. Other learning at Cisco study material references 9.x documentation. There are many different kinds of documents, SRNDs, deployment guides, administration and maintenance guides. There are Cisco lab presentations. You can find training videos on YouTube. There are thousands of documents that match blueprint topics for each of the exams. We'll help you get started here. And we have individual videos with more detail for each exam. What training is available, how can I find it, and how useful is it? Start with official Cisco training. The courses are available in three formats. The five-day instructor-led courses are the best place to start, but are expensive and provide limited time for labs. Fastlane offers bridge courses. These are shorter versions of the Cisco courses, focusing on newer technologies and updates. Investigate these if you are familiar with some, but not all, of the content in standard five-day courses. Cisco's eLearning with Lab products are much less expensive and provide a similar experience to the course. The eLearning with Lab student guide and labs are the same as for the five-day instructor-led courses. And you have access to the content, including the labs, for a year. Fastlane is providing these for free if you take one of our instructor-led courses. And the Foundation Learning Guides are the least expensive option, but include no labs. Remember, Cisco has indicated that understanding the course content is not sufficient to pass the exam. The five-day instructor-led courses are great. This is the best place to start if you have the time and money. The labs are detailed and use real hardware and software, and the instructor can provide value-add and mentoring Fastlane offers bridge courses that are shorter versions of the Cisco courses, focusing on newer technologies and updates. These are good options if you are familiar with some, but not all of the content in the standard five-day courses. There are some drawbacks to the standard five-day courses. They are expensive, in most cases around $3,500. It can be hard to take five days off work. It can be hard to stay focused for five days. The courses are heavy and many students find it hard to drink from the fire hose. The labs are only available for the duration of the course. In many classes, many students never finish the labs and there is little time for exploration and discovery. 
Make sure your instructor has taken the test. Many learning partners have instructors who haven't taken the test for the courses they deliver. Cisco's newly released eLearning Training, or ELT, provides an all-inclusive next-generation ELT solution which will help prepare you for the CCNP collaboration exams. You get the same content as in the ILT, instructor-led training version, including most of the hands-on labs. New format supports multiple devices so you can train at your own pace on any of multiple supported devices. Take an instructor-led course from Fastlane and get a free one-year subscription to the corresponding ELT course. You can maximize the benefit of the instructor-led training by reviewing the material in the ELT before attending the ILT course. You can rerun the labs for the course for a year after you've taken the course. Fastlane also offers a mentoring package to ensure you have the greatest success with your e-learning purchases. The e-learning products provide the same slides, student guide, and labs as the instructor-led training. Here's a screen cap from the CAPS ELT course. Instructor-led training. An instructor presents the slides in a live environment. The instructor may or may not provide value add for individual slides. The instructor can answer questions. E-learning training. The notes for the slides are read out as a voiceover for the slide and there is no value add. The value add for the course depends entirely on your instructor. Some instructors provide detailed whiteboard explanations, and some do not. Also, the time available in an ILT class does not allow for much added explanation. The e-learning products provide most of the same hands-on labs. Here's a screen cap from a CIPT V2 ELT course lab. For some labs, you have access to the CUCM GUI just like you would in a lab on an ILT course. Instructor-led training. Labs use real hardware and software. For remote labs, soft phones are used instead of hard phones. Labs are only available for the five-day class. In many cases, students can't finish the labs in the time allocated. Some courses have optional labs that almost no one has time to run. E-learning training. Some labs use real hardware and software, and some are simulated. Soft phones are used instead of hard phones. Labs are available for an entire year with 24-7 access and can be run repeatedly. While some labs aren't as real as in the ILT course, the trade-off is that they are available for a full year. We think the labs for the Cisco eLearning products are worth the cost of the products alone. What about the Cisco Press Foundation Learning Guides? Many people aren't aware that the Foundation Learning Guides are mostly just reformatted versions of the course student guides. The student guides are reproduced in these books, so they are an inexpensive way to get the course content. There's some value add, but if you've taken the course and have the student guide, then purchasing this book doesn't make a lot of sense. The same is true if you have purchased the e-learning product. A downside to the Cisco Pressbook is that there are no labs. Without hands-on labs, it's very difficult to pass the exams. Learning at Cisco provides guidance on study material for each exam on the Study Materials tab. We looked at the Study Materials tabs and found that many topics had no recommended study material and much of the material that was recommended was inappropriate. For example, for CAPS, the only recommended study material was on troubleshooting Cisco Unity Connection and Cisco Unity Express. You need a premium subscription to the Cisco Learning Network to access these. For CIPT V1, the recommended material was not useful. We didn't find any useful study material recommended for that exam at all. What about other official documents? There are many different kinds of documents available for free, including SRNDs, Solution Reference Network Design Guides, Administration Guides, Deployment Guides, Feature and Service Guides, and Cisco Live Presentations. What about unofficial material, like YouTube videos? 
There's a lot of good content out there on YouTube, and it's also free. Fastlane is providing discussions and recommendations for each exam. We are producing individual videos for each exam for our website. These will be arriving shortly. You will be able to find these videos on the Fastlane web pages for the individual courses. Let's talk about study methods and time required. How should I study and how long will it take? There are many ways to study. Here are a few options that we'll talk about. Read and reread. Take notes and summarize. Practice doing labs. Hands-on is always good. And practice tests. Read and reread. If you have a really good memory, this might be all you need. You have to start somewhere. For most people, this is good for a first step but problematic as a complete solution. Take notes and summarize. You need to get organized to do this effectively. We look at building crib notes. We are starting to develop summaries or crib notes. We'll review some of these in ILT classes and use them for mentoring. Here's an example of crib notes for building a SIP trunk from a CUCM cluster to a VCS cluster. We summarize the steps in the Cisco VCS SIP Trunk to Unified CM Deployment Guide. On the left, you see a summary of the steps, and on the right, you see detail on important settings for each step. We use this to study for the CIPTV2 exam based on the Implement Trunks to VCS topic on the CIPTV2 blueprint. Practice doing labs. We're not aware of any practice labs other than the actual course or e-learning labs. The e-learning options are a great place to start. While some of the labs are simulated, you can still run through all of the steps for all of the labs. There are practice questions in the instructor-led and e-learning courses and in the foundation learning guide. You should do those if you have them. The Cisco Learning Network has 9 or 10 practice questions for each exam. Getting 100% on these does not mean you are ready for the test. If you search the internet, you can find many practice tests. Only material offered by Cisco or Cisco Learning Partners would be considered approved. Using unapproved practice tests to prep would be considered cheating if the questions on the practice test are copies of the real test questions. And in addition, you won't have the job skills necessary to do your job. Fastlane does not support the use of unofficial practice exams that just give out the test questions. How much time should I spend studying? It depends on your background. If you are starting from scratch, then you'll need many weeks for each class. Don't underestimate how long it will take to prepare for some of these exams. If you are familiar with some of the content, then less time will be required but you still may need a lot of time to prepare. For example, if you are unfamiliar with VCS and Expressway, you could spend many weeks on just this topic to prepare for the CIPTV2 exam. Finding the material to study is an issue. Fastlane mentoring services can help in this respect. It's very difficult to know, when am I ready? At some point, you'll have to take the exam to find out. Don't be embarrassed by failing. We know many Cisco collaboration instructors who failed many of these exams after spending years teaching the corresponding courses. Many find the CCNP collaboration exams difficult. To pass, you need to know what's on the exam and what material to study. You need an effective study method and you need to allocate the time required given your background and experience. All Fastlane CCNP collaboration courses are being enhanced to include exclusive exam prep content. Free one-year subscription to the corresponding Cisco eLearning with Labs product. Help understanding the blueprint. Discussion of sources for study material and investigation of test preparation techniques, summarization and building crib notes. Fastlane also offers bridge courses if you only need a part of a five-day certification course. 
Fastlane can customize courses to meet your specific training requirements. See what Fastlane has to offer to help you with your Cisco Collaboration certification at this address. Thank you for watching.